Howdy, everybody. Welcome to the show. Uh, another edition of That's Railroad, where uh, we bring the railroad to you. <laughs> I got a, um, a lot of questions, and I'm going to answer them today on the why why we don't uh, wash our ballast. So, um, all right, we're getting started here. Said uh, so. Video today, we're going to tell you why we don't reclaim our ballast, why we don't worship. Okay, got a lot of questions asked from people in the past, from especially up there on the uh, other side of Curve 15 that we did. We had four videos out on there where we was clean, cribbing and cleaning out the shoulder, <laughs> and. Uh, we're down here on the other side of Curve 15 right now. I did some cribbing the other day down here. And yesterday I had to go down and crib out the crossing at milepost 8. So get this little bit over here. This I throwed all this over here down over the hill uh, a couple of days ago and crib this out. Not running a train this week. They've got some major problems with the prep plant. Uh, major problems. So, crypt out the, That's the train going back to the harbor. He dumped, he dumped ballast down here this morning at uh, where I cribbed out yesterday. The regulators down here at milepost eight siding. So, why don't we clean this stuff? No, it does, sure does seem like it's quite a waste to just throw this stuff over the hill up on the bank and get rid of it. I understand that. But let's uh, let's think about some of the logistics of what we've got to do to, to uh, get this ballast cleaned, okay? Uh, first, we're gonna have to get it out of here. Now, I don't have the reach really, it would be really difficult. I don't even know if I could, uh, I don't think I could reach top of a hopper car our ballast car I don't I, I, I couldn't just couldn't reach there and uh, be very productive at it I have to have just made it half a bucket so uh, we could conceivably cut one of our aluminum hopper cars in half then we've got a bottom dump to deal with uh, when we dump it uh, probably the best solution get it out of here would be to have a side dump gondola. Uh, we actually had <laughs> a couple of those way in the past, probably 35 years ago, where we uh, had used them to clean up some rock cuts. And they would be fairly easy to load, and it would probably take me about an hour to load this stuff in, a, uh, in one of those cars. If we had a bottom dump, well, let me back up. Let's say uh, we don't have a high rail dump. Also, uh, if we, so that's another option we could have, but uh, probably if we're gonna load it out here, the side dump gondola would be the best option. Okay, so we gotta have a tie up a train or a locomotive and another operator to do all that. Now we got to take it someplace. We don't currently have a wash plant. So we're going to have to build a wash plant. <clears throat> and about the only place we can do that, we're going to need water and we're going to need electricity. Which electricity we can get just about anywhere, but we need a lot of room. And I'll tell you why in a minute. So we're probably going to put our wash plant down at the milepost State siding. And it's going to have to go on the right side of the track over here because there's no room on the left unless we make a significant land purchase to do that. We don't own the ground over there. So we're going to build our uh, wash plant down there. So now we're going to have to have another turnout down there going on this, this side of the track to get a high rail dump or the hopper car or the gondola car or whatever in there. 
once if we have a bottom dub hopper car now we got to dig out underneath uh, put a grating in tracks through the just like we have where we have our where they dump the coal out okay which is a lot of excavation a lot of work and uh, if we had a side dump gondola that would be fairly easy we could just dump it over the dig a little thing down here a concrete thing and dump it into that that would be easy the only uh, So we gotta build our wash plant. So let's say we get all that in, in place. We've got the water there, we get our wash plant built, and uh, we get the cars dumped. Uh, probably if we have a side dump, we're gonna have to have a high lift down there, so that's a purchase. Get a used high lift, not that big of a deal. We're also gonna need a high lift to reload it. So it's gonna into the ballast car down there. Uh, so it's going to have to be a fairly good size high lift down there. Now, here's the big one. Okay, we wash this, wash this stuff off. We you, we we talked in the past about having some kind of a bucket, uh, sifter bucket or a shaker bucket or something, screening bucket, and to, it's just going to have to get washed to get all that coal and the mud out. So we got our wash plant built, which who knows what it's going to cost. Maybe you know, this is uh, prices are just outrageous, as you all know, for everything. So we get our wash plant built, and uh, now we got to have some place to get rid of that wash water. Once we wash this, we're going to have a slurry. We're going to have nice ballast at the end. Um, so we're going to have to have a stockpile for the ballast. We're going to have a belt to feed it or whatever. That stockpile. And then, but now we got to build a big slurry pond. Uh, and it's going to have to be a pretty good sized slurry pond. So, not undoable, but huge, huge, huge expense. Now we got to go through permitting the DEP. Uh, probably MSHA is going to get involved, Mine Safety Health Administration. Uh, and because of the new regulations, they're building a new impoundment up there at the mine, which you'll see videos of sometime in the future. <laughs> uh, they just got started here. It's going to be a huge project. Uh, for the solids, they don't have to. Have, they can use a clay base. For the slurry water, it's got to get lined, and that rubber liner, and that's that's federal regulations now. It's got to get and that rubber liner is about that thick. All right, and then it comes in probably. I think they're 12 foot widths, and then those that liner's got to get either. I don't really know how to do it yet, whether they glue it or whether they vulcanize it together, but that's a big job. So that whole slurry pond we build down there is going to have to have a rubber liner in it. Now that's big bucks. Okay? And uh, hope your slurry pond never fills up. Uh, so we got... Right now we're looking at maybe 30 years left of coal here. Uh, we do have more reserves, whether those get sold in the future. Uh, it could be up to 50 years, depends. And, and you know, we can't speculate on that on the future, whether they're going to sell that coal or not. But uh, So, the slurry pond's the big one. And, of course, it's going to have to be and right now right now currently we buy our ballast for $18 a ton delivered new ballast and that's pretty reasonable really um, our annual budget is between 130 and 150 thousand dollars a year for new ballast so to build this plant, we're probably looking at, and I, this is a guess, I know this is a guess, but we're probably looking at between two and three million dollars to build this whole big facility. And uh, it's gonna have to be manned, I guess 
so I can do it, but I can run it, but then that takes away time here, so it's not going to be a big job, but anyway. So when you look at the big picture, uh, on the short term, it's definitely not a feasible thing to do is to build a washing plant. Now you look over an extended period of 30 years and maybe even 50, yeah, it probably could be cost effective. But here's the big thing too that you gotta consider. Once this mine, let's say our life of our mine is 30 years. Once the mine shuts down, what are we gonna do with that pond? Can you imagine 30 years from now what the cost would be to reclaim or eliminate that pond, it would be just astronomical. And if they keep it, then it's got to be monitored. So I think that's one of the big things uh, is that slurry pond that you would have to have. Why it would not be a really very feasible thing to do. It's just and you know the, the, the time that it takes me to load all this out it's so easy uh, you rock deliver down there load it in a ballast car it takes about 25 minutes to load 90 ton bring it up here I can dump 90 ton off in in uh, 12 minutes uh, don't have to pay me to load it up a little bit of time running off here but uh, so, so I think that's uh, one of the big reasons why we don't uh, why they, they're not even going to consider it so, I mean, I know it does seem like quite a waste to uh, just throw this stuff over the hill, but that's the way it is. All right. So, hope, uh, hope that gave you guys some food for thought, gave you some answers, and uh, well, why we don't reclaim our ballast. Okay. I uh, <laughs> want to thank you very much for watching. I uh, hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed today's show. The sun's not out here this morning. It'd be nice if the sun was out. We could, we could show you that nice hillside over there. It's uh, <laughs> really pretty with the sun coming. But it's a little bit early in the morning here. All right. I got to switch buckets, get to cribbing, and uh, we'll get some rock up here later. Okay. Have a really good day. Happy rails to you, my friend, until we meet again. Thank <laughs> you.